everyone, it's Meredith from BespokeClassroom.com and today I wanted to share with you five unique ideas for ending the school year using Google Slides. So let's get started. Google Slides is amazing for a million different reasons, but I really like this idea of creating digital books or scrapbooks or journals or plans using Google Slides because it is so user friendly. And so here are some ideas you can use for the end of the school year. This one is a, an end of the year digital time capsule. I love the idea of a time capsule. I love the idea of capturing the past and then being able to go back and look at how much and reflect upon how much things have changed. So we all know with time capsules, you're dealing with collecting objects and burying them. But if you do that as a class, how are students gonna be able to come back and see what's in that five years down the road? So anyway, I think a digital time capsule really takes care of a lot of the issues with doing a physical time capsule. So basically all students are gonna do is they're going to compile data and information from today, and then they're gonna put it into this Google Slides presentation. And the directions say on here to set a timer for five years from now or an alert from five years from now on your phone or on your like Google Calendar so that you can go back. It'll alert you in five years and to go back and open this file and look at it. And then you can just reflect on like how things have changed and where you are in your life at that point. So students will put in, you know, the start date like this. This time capsule was digitally buried on this date to be opened five years down the road. They can put in there like a picture of themselves and all kinds of favorite things from foods to songs to books to movies to sports teams to school subjects because our tastes change as we grow and get older and certainly as we enter career fields. What do your goals look like? Um, what advice would you give? I like this slide here where it has them capture their social media followers on all the social media channels because I think that that's really fun to look at and see how you've grown with your social media. But students can tailor this and add anything else they want to. They want to add in like current event headlines. I think that's a brilliant idea. They want to add in like the number one movie at the box office. That's great. The number one song, the number one music video, the number one TikTok video. I mean, the options are limitless with any of this. And I really think it's important that even though I have a template here for students to use, that they can tailor this, add to it, change it as they see fit to really make it their own. So that's the digital time capsule. And I really feel like in many ways, it's related to the end of the year digital scrapbook. So I love scrapbooking. I love cutting out the papers and decorating and making all of that in a beautiful notebook, but that's definitely not everybody's cup of tea. It is a lot more time consuming than doing one that's digital. But one of the reasons why I also like doing a digital scrapbook is that students can come back to this and they can add to it year after year after year. If this is something they start in ninth grade, and then they do it through 12th grade, by the time they graduate, they will have a scrapbook of all their high school career. And I think this might have more meaning for students than even yearbooks because it's more personal. So again, they can personalize this, putting in uh, favorite pictures from the school year, putting in what they read that year, the top 10 from the year, putting in their theme song for the year. So that's a little different twist on the song idea, not the number one song, but what song was their theme song? Because we have years that are good. We have years that are bad. We have years that are blah, meh, kind of just in between. So what's the theme song? What's a letter to next year's class? Like what would you tell next year's class? We're doing some reflection, capturing some quotes. I love this idea of taking a field trip to the next grade. What does that look like? What teachers are you going to have? What school are you going to? If you're a senior in high school and you're going off to college, where are you going? What is that going to look like? If you're in ninth grade, what are you taking next year? What teachers are you going to have? What is that going to look like? So just looking ahead, you know, so the end of the year is a great time to look ahead. And again, students can tailor this and add in what they see fit. Another idea for using the Google Slides would be to um, go ahead and do a school year reflection journal. The, this is just standard you know, reflective question journaling, but 
still so necessary so that students take ownership of their own learning. So this particular um, Google Slides presentation is full of all kinds of questions like, you know, what is something in, that you, you did this year that you think you'll remember for the rest of your life? Because most of our school days from day in and day out, we're not going to remember. You're just not going to remember. It's going to take some special thing that happened or bad thing that happened or great thing that happened for students to remember. Um, and what is something you accomplished that you're proud of? What's your favorite like physical space at the school? I love this question. It could be a teacher's classroom. It could be a nook in the library. It could be, you know, I don't know, a special stairwell, wherever. It could be like outside by the fountain if your school has it that. But I love that idea of physical space. And then, of course, looking at things you could change, things you could do better and different, setting goals. Three adjectives to describe your school year. What was it like? And we all know we're going to have ups and downs and all around. So just capturing like that year and what it looked like and thinking about even if it wasn't a good year, you know, what does that mean? What did you gain from that? Did you grow in any way, etc.? So those are reflection questions. And then another idea is to simply do my dream summer vacation and do some vacation planning. This would be the first time probably for many students to actually plan a vacation from start to finish. There's a lot that goes into planning a vacation. So it's like, first you think about where you will go, when you will travel, how will you get there, it depends on where you're going, of course, who you're going to invite to come with you, what are the things you want to for sure see, what's on your top 10 things to see, things to do. Where will you stay? That takes research, right? You've got to figure out where you're going to stay, how much it costs. You've got to figure out transportation while you're there. Are you going to be taking trains, boats, buses? Are you going to rent one of those Segways? Are you going to rent a bicycle? Like, what does that look like? Are you going to be on a gondola? I mean, you have to figure these things out before you go in advance. And then, of course, they can put together kind of a scrapbook of what um, sort of a vision board for their trip with images of what they expect to, to experience and do while they're there. And then, of course, do some preliminary budgeting. How much is this trip actually going to cost? You have this dream. You have this budget, this number that it comes out to be, and then how can you make that a reality in your life? And then maybe someday students can actually take these vacations, which might be pretty cool. And then finally, the fifth thing that I would like to um, I like to have students do is simply um, summer reading planner. That's a great one. So this is where students research different kinds of books, different genres. They'll research fiction and nonfiction, classic pieces of lit, comic books, autobiographies or biographies or memoirs, whatever genres they're interested in. Um, and they'll look into those genres. Maybe it's self-help, whatever it is. But they're going to research and brainstorm a bunch of different titles and then narrow it down to three books to read over the summer. I think the rule of three, the number three, is a good manageable number of books to read over summer break, whether they're going to read on the beach or you're going to read at home or you're going to read by the swimming pool or you're going to go read at the park. You know, you want to read like a, you know, and, and having a diversity and a good mix is important. Maybe you read like one heavy hitting classic piece of lit and then you read like one pop fiction book. You know, maybe you want to read Hunger Games because you never read that. And then you want to pick up maybe something totally different for you. You've never even looked at it ever, like a poetry anthology, and take a look at that. But the idea is just to, to really get out there, see what's out there, try out some new things, and plan that summer reading list. So um, I have all of these bundled together for sale over on um, Bespoke ELA at Teachers Pay Teachers. So there are links to that. You can go and grab that um, bundle, and it is fully editable and customizable for you to customize or your students to customize. That's what's so great about it. They can truly just make it their own. But these are good templates to get you started if you're interested. So check them out, and while you're at it, head over to the Bespoke Classroom blog, check out all the freebies happening there, and I'll see you back here again soon.